You, the person who clicked on this video, tell me right now. Genuinely, go into the comments and tell me, what do you expect from a game when booting it up? Maybe you expect fun and exciting gameplay, or an interesting and immersive storyline. Maybe you expect revolutionary graphics, or maybe you're looking for a million bugs at launch, forcing you to wait for the game to get patched up so you can actually experience it in the way that it was intended. Maybe you're looking for a story with awfully written characters and dialogues. Wow, you sound like a serial killer. What? Destruction and corruption are beautiful forms of creation in themselves. Or are you looking for a grind fest, where the only way to actually have fun is slave hours of your life away just to get enough premium currency to unlock new characters? No! <laughs> no! Or instead, you can always just, you know, pay up. Video games, ever since their birth back in the dinosaur era, have always been a form of entertainment. Just like watching a movie, or maybe if you're a dinosaur yourself, reading a book. But over the past however many years, gaming has continued evolving. And nowadays, I like to divide it into three different categories, you know, like the avatar nations. First, we have the neutral ground. Projects from well-established game development teams that are usually just fine in terms of quality and playability. Those would include something like Super Mario Odyssey, or the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Remember this one, by the way, it'll be important for later. And others of such kind. Next, we have the good, indie gaming. At this point, let's be fair, carrying the entire gaming industry on its back. Constantly introducing new mechanics and ideas into the scene, usually having great production quality and great value. You can't really miss with indie gaming. And next, we have the awful, which we will discuss right now. What games do I think plague the industry? Why do I consider them so bad? And how can we tackle the issue at hand? You'll find out about all that throughout the video, but for now, my name's IGN Devi, and this is why modern gaming is a disgrace. Hey, sorry for pausing your video. It's actually my birthday today, and the best gift from you to me would be to just subscribe to the channel. It takes you one singular click, and it would mean the world to me. Also, in honor of my birthday, I am running a Discord Nitro giveaway in my Discord server. All you have to do is just join the Discord and subscribe. Again, thank you so much, and you can continue watching. Gaming was, for a while after its very birth, a very plain and simple concept, with bare-bones gameplay and mechanics. Just remember something like Pong or Space Invaders. But even with games being so simple, ever since the birth of gaming as a whole, game developers had one goal in mind, and that was to entertain. Whether it was consumers and other players, or actually the developers themselves, their purpose was always just to have a fun time with the game. But over time, gaming kept evolving, new concepts were being introduced, and with price tags inflating and microtransactions practically plaguing every game out there in the scene nowadays, the goals kinda shifted a little bit. It was no longer about giving the person a fun experience or entertaining them, no. Now game development poses a different goal. Appeal to the masses, obtain good critic reviews, sell as many copies as possible and collect as many dollars as possible from in-game purchases. Nowadays the gameplay, the story and the mechanics are a bit of an afterthought. Now it's all about not letting the hype die. Studios started cutting corners, there are pretty much whole games that are just built up like Xenos for children, and as sad as it is, those are the games that everyone keeps talking about nowadays, and those are the games that top the charts. And if you're still a bit lost in the topic, I have some good examples to bring to you, so you can understand exactly why I think modern gaming is as bad as it is. Exhibit 1. Kid-Friendly Gambling So if you've been on the internet for at least 7 seconds, you've probably heard of a certain Chinese game, yeah it's Genshin Impact. It's always Genshin Impact. Genshin is a so-called ARPG, with the A standing for A, give us your money, I guess, developed by Hoyoverse and released for most gaming platforms, including console and mobile in 2020. Wikipedia, whose new design is complete dog ass, by the way, may I mention, talks about the game as the game features an anime-style open-world environment and an action-based battle system using elemental magic and character switching. But really, the core game itself doesn't even matter, because it's practically completely ripped off 
off from the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Like, seriously, what the fuck are you doing, Hoyoverse? They even stole the fucking climbing mechanic. But I'm getting a bit sidetracked. As I already said, the core game is of no interest to us. What is interesting is the microtransaction filled mess that is Genshin Impact. You see, the entire focus of the game are these neat looking anime characters. The only way to unlock them? Well, gamble. Pay to gamble. Play the games and then spend your hard-earned primal gems to gamble. Spend every ounce of your time working just to then gamble. Buy paid subscriptions to gamble. Receive gifts from the company to then gamble away. Wait for banners to switch so you can then gamble. Fucking gamble to gamble. If you haven't realized yet at this point, everything in this game leads back to their gacha mechanic. Where you can pray, quite literally, in the Russian translation of the game, wishes are called prayers, which I think is pretty fitting, to try and receive new characters characters and weapons. You know, ones that you actually want and not some 3 star garbage. You receive the required premium currency to gamble by either actually playing the game and receiving minuscule amounts, like seriously what the hell is this, or by paying up. This game is meticulously built up to force you to pay up at one point or another. Because no matter how much you love grinding, at one point you will break because this game is tedious as fuck and Hoyoverse knows that. But you might say I'm a bit unqualified to talk about this, since I'm a what, a measly AR-14? So take it from my friend instead. She's been playing Genshin Impact ever since it released back in 2020, and she's currently Adventure Rank 57, here to talk about some of the concerns she has about the game. Quote, First off, I want to mention that Genshin has very boring and long storylines and cutscenes that are completely unskippable. The biggest problem is that not all cutscenes and lines in the game are actually voiced, making reading them incorrect incredibly tedious and uninteresting. You can't really play Genshin Impact without microtransactions, and that's a fact. Another problem is that the game is very poorly optimized and weighs a lot. The PC version at this point is just shy of 100 gigabytes. Genshin is very tedious and every ounce of progression in it takes tons of time. Even getting the artifacts you need, there are no guarantees and it relies purely on your luck. You have to go to the exact same dungeon every single day, multiple times. Banners, the gacha mechanic, has its own guarantee system. System, but in reality, it doesn't actually guarantee anything. Getting 90 spins for a single character is brutal even without the blessing of the Welkin Moon. In short, Genshin is one huge microtransaction filled piece of trash. I don't recommend playing it whatsoever. In the end, you'll just waste your free time on this useless game. End quote. And that's coming from someone who actually played the game all the way back since it first released. And this is one of the most popular games of the Generation Z? Since Genshin got so popular, a lot of other game development studios started picking up on their trends, including their own shitty gacha mechanics in their games to suck out money from users. And now, practically every gaming platform is filled with games like that. Another good example of a game that's made just to suck money out of people is Diablo Immortal. I won't go too in depth into it here since I bet you already heard all about it, but even when giants of the industry are dipping their toes into this stupid RNG microtransaction mess, you know what's gotten bad. Now you might start to understand why this is actually a big problem and a threat to the gaming sphere as a whole. Exhibit 2, Multiplayer Mess. I really don't know where Blizzard were going with Overwatch 2. My only guess is that they saw Overwatch 1 completely die and decided to reboot it to do... what exactly? Definitely not to bring back the interest of people to the game, because technically and mechanically, Overwatch 2 lacks compared to Overwatch 1 in every single way. My best guess is that Overwatch 2 was just a simple game to produce. You already had a base to build on. And with all the hype around it, Blizzard realized it would be an easy cash grab, which is exactly what it is. And that's pretty much why everything in Overwatch 2 technically lacks and monetarily prevails. But again, don't take it from me. I've spoken to someone who actually played Overwatch 1 for a long, long time and tried Overwatch 2 and gave me a nice little review of it. Quote, It feels like Blizzard wants to fix all of their mistakes with Overwatch 2, but at the same time, they put literally no time and effort into the game whatsoever. The UI compared to the first installment is awful. The colors they use for it are terrible. The main menu looks so simple and lazy, it feels like you're playing some fan game on a free engine. The profile system and magic history were executed poorly as well. Another thing I want to complain about is the fact that it's literally impossible to join a game because of the immense queue, approximately 30 to 45,000 people, maybe 1,000 if you're lucky. Not happy with that? Go to a different server. And Blizzard are trying to cover this up saying they're getting DDoS. Another terrible thing about the game is that 
they completely got rid of the free loot box system, instead replacing it with a battle pass system, which doesn't have literally any free rewards you're required to pay for it. They not only couldn't properly launch a new game, but they also suck at fixing the existing mistakes. End quote. Now, of course, some of these issues could be written off as this review was written just when the game released. So, for example, the queues definitely aren't as big anymore, but my point still stands. Every technical part of the game lacks and it's impossible to obtain literally any free stuff without paying up. And this is really common in multiplayer games nowadays. Just remember how butthurt people were about Battlefront 2 and how it was basically a money-sucking machine. The fact that this is commonplace nowadays is completely outrageous. Exhibit 3! Eh, that'll do. Cyberpunk 2077 was hyped up to be the next big thing in gaming. Everyone was wild about it, talking how it'll be the best game ever released or something. At least that's what I heard all the way up until Cyberpunk 2077 was actually released. Upon putting up the game, players realized that Cyberpunk 2077 wasn't actually a game, it was just some sort of cruel joke. The game was practically unplayable, with constant bizarre glitches and crashes, it's clear the code was unfinished and not ready for release. On December December 18th, the game even got pulled from the PlayStation Game Store, and people who purchased it were offered refunds. The reason that happened is probably because CDPR was practically pressured into releasing the game way too early by shareholders. And this isn't exactly the dev team's mistake, as we already understood, but I was just kinda a taste for what was about to come. Over the next two years, we saw so many game releases that were just dry, unfinished, uninteresting, and plain underwhelming. For example, Sonic Frontiers. Well, yeah, as the game actually received pretty good reviews from users and critics alike, look at this goddamn game. If this is what the dev team was going for, then shame on them, they really have no taste in how a game should look. And if it's not what the dev team was going for, and for some reason the dev team just released the game in the state that it is currently, then that really sucks. Because it could have been, and it really is just such a cool project, but it looks so damn dry. Another good recent example is Forspoken. This game was hyped up up a lot and from the trailers and teasers it seemed great at first but upon release it turned out to be the hottest steamiest pile of shit imaginable with terrible dialogue subpar gameplay and it was just overall an underwhelming experience showing that the team behind Forspoken is either just really bad at what they're doing or once again they were pressured into releasing the game in the state that it was by some unknown factors which really sucks because with some polish it again could have been great oh and by the way while I was recording this this video, I found out that the team behind Forspoken was actually disbanded, lol. This shows a really depressing pattern of game development studios riding the hype and then releasing games in an unfinished state, providing users an underwhelming experience. In process, ruining projects that could have been truly great. AAA projects with subpar quality have now become another staple in the sphere, and that's once again just really, really bad and really sad. At least to me, it is. The conclusion. The game development sphere is being poisoned. It's being poisoned by people who don't want to give users a fun experience or make an actually great product. It's filled with people who want to just make a quick buck, who want to get as much money as possible from microtransactions and as many sales as possible riding the wave of hype. They'll go to any extent just to secure the bag. Underage gambling, paywalling content in games, releasing games in unfinished states. All of this should be looked down upon by the greater public. We should push back against development studios that do this shit. Instead, you could turn to indie gaming as I already said in the intro. With affordable prices, no ridiculous microtransactions, you'll get an actually awesome quality experience for an affordable price and in turn support those game developers to hopefully make the gaming sphere a cleaner place and free the space for more great projects like like that. Screw big companies trying to make a profit, indie gaming is the way to go. But for now, I was your host IGN Devi, and thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.